welcome. I'm Ann Jones Guider, District 4 here in Douglas County. And I have a treat for you today. Uh, we have a special guest. Uh, she's a resident here in Douglas County and grew up here. Um, and she's uh, almost a historian, just in her own self. And uh, I want to welcome you, uh, welcome Dorothy, I call her Dot, Dot. Paget. Uh, Dot, I'm going to just read off a few little things okay. that you have accomplished. Of course, uh, I don't have time to do them all. And, <laughs> oh. and I know that, and anybody that knows you, anybody that knows uh, Dot, they know how active she is in the community, uh, what a benefit she is to the community, and what a difference she has made to Douglas County. Uh, for those of you that do not know her, uh, you will get to know her a little bit more today, but uh, uh, she's got so many accolades, I don't, I can't list them all. <laughs> but um, she did grow up here in Douglasville. Um, I believe it was a dirt road uh, when, you <laughs> oh, <yeah. laughs> a lot of dirt roads when you grew up here. Right. And uh, she is the, uh, she was married to Dave, who was a banker. And um, she is a mother of four and a grandmother of six grandchildren and a great-grandmother to three children. So uh, she, has, uh, she has her private life and then she has that public life. <laughs> um, she served, Dot served on the election <coughs> committee for our 39th president, Jimmy Carter. She, uh, she organized what they called the Peanut, Peanut Brigade, Brigade, the Peanut Grenade. And she was uh, affectionately known as the den mother of that group. <laughs> um, uh, I think there were 600 volunteers that encompassed that group and that y'all had a budget of no more than $38 million, something like that. And uh, right now they can spend that in <coughs> two or three weeks uh, well, two, three <laughs> or in a day. Yes. I think the TV spots mm -hmm. cost more than that. but. Uh, after he was elected, uh, the president was elected, uh, she served as his assistant chief of protocol for the State Department. And she also has served on the Georgia Council of Arts. And are you still serving on the Carter Center Council? Yes, on the Board of Councils, yes. Yes, okay. So see, she's still active, still going just as strong. And uh, she is the recipient of the Citizen of the Year Award yeah. from our chamber here yeah, in Douglasville. That was great. Yes. Uh, I don't know why it took them so long to give you that. <laughs> uh, they had and, a lot of good people. Yes. And she is also an author. An author of a book. Uh, it's called Jimmy Carter, Elected President with <clears throat> Pocket Change and Peanuts. Very interesting. I haven't read all of it yet, but I've uh, uh, flipped through and read some of the highlights, and we will be talking about um, the book. You were a feature on the C-SPAN uh, book TV program, and you did a wonderful job. Well, thank you. It, it was, it was fun. You just stole the show. You had the audience. She's always got this sense of humor about her <laughs> that uh, she's so enjoyable, and she's, uh, I, I think you, of you as a professional storyteller because you can just uh, uh, just capture our attention and everything. But we're going to go into the, the book uh, uh, later on in the show. But let's uh, go ahead, if we could, and kind of start about um, maybe growing up here and uh, what the differences that you have seen in Douglas County and Douglasville in particular since you... Uh, we're a child. Oh, yeah. <laughs> That's fine. Uh, and thank you very much. And I appreciate all of those things that you've said. Uh, I would like to do this, so I will do want to get into growing up and how the changes have been. But since you've mentioned the book, I want to bring out one particular thing that's really important. Okay. Now, uh, the Peanut Brigade was volunteer. Mm -hmm. And the 30... Well, it was $31 million for the entire campaign. Mm -hmm. And we were operating and campaigning under the federal election laws that came about because of the Nixon Watergate. And the, the federal election laws in 1976, both Ford and, and uh, President Carter both 
uh, campaigned under that. So we could on, only have the $31 million. Uh, the parties could spend Does money. Does that mean your funds were for limited? For the own, uh, that was what the campaign could spend, yes. Okay. The parties could spend money. Uh, during the primary, the peanut brigaders could spend their own money. But during the general election, there were $22 million. And that was what we had other than what the parties would, would okay. spend. But also with the book, um, the um, I, I would like to make the connection with Jimmy Carter in Douglas County. Yes, okay. Uh, there's a real important connection there, and it's in the book. It's written in the chapter uh, governing the state of Georgia. Mm -hmm. And when he was governor, the property, Sweetwater State Park now, that property was coming up for sale. The uh, owner of the property was an absentee owner, had 1,400 acres, and he had just grown very tired of the legislators saying, oh, we don't have money for a park. So uh, he was getting ready to sell it. And there was a group of people in Atlanta that knew the beauty of that park, the natural elements that had never been touched. And let me, let me just say that uh, right now, Sweetwater Park is the number one visited park in the state of Georgia. Absolutely, in yes. In the state of Georgia. In the state of Georgia. And if, yeah. if you haven't uh, been there, you need to because, and it's on the eastern side of the, the county. Um, it's beautiful. Uh, it's, well, Brandon. it's more than 1,400 acres now, okay. but uh, that was the amount that he was offering then for sale. And it, they, he was right on the verge of saying, oh, I'm tired of fooling with this. I'm going to put it out there on the market. And uh, of course, the people that saw the, the uh, natural beauty of it, it was actually people from Atlanta. Douglas County had not paid that much attention really? to it. But not only the beauty, but the, uh, the, ruins the ruins that were there from the Civil There's War. There's an old mill there. Correct, uh, that right was there during the, the Civil River. War. Yeah, yes. very important mill during the Civil War. And that has its own history. I know you've probably done yeah. something. <laughs> TJ, you've probably done something on that, maybe even um, with me. But uh, Jimmy Carter uh, created the Georgia Land Heritage Trust, and through that he uh, convinced the legislators to provide enough money uh, to put an option on this property. So it saved the property, it mm -hmm. was not sold, and of course we are the, uh, the benefit from that in Douglas County. But Sweetwater State Park to me encompasses and embodies three things that are most important to me in Douglas County, right. and that's the beauty of our county, mm -hmm. the history, and education. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, if you follow their schedules, they have an ongoing learning yes. experience going on there all the time. So those are the things that I think that I have found important to Douglas County. And the beauty, of course, is, um, is very important to me, but the education in reading the early minutes of the county and the city, the pioneers in our county were very interested in educating the children and the young people in, in the county. Right. So early, early on, they provided schools in all of the communities. And of course now we have uh, Mercer, we have right. Georgia Highlands, we have West Georgia Technical mm -hmm. College, mm -hmm. the college in Korea, we have other higher education schools that I'm not familiar with. And our test scores, you know, match the highest scores in the state of Georgia. So, you know, the, of the three things, of course, education is, mm -hmm. is, is very, very important. And the history, too. Uh, and and uh, the park offers a lot of activities from kayaking to trail Trail. You can camp out there. You can rent those oh, little. Oh, you can rent thing. those little houses. I think they <laughs> yeah. have little tree houses, don't they? Well, they're, they're little tent-looking things, yeah. and uh, you can rent those out. Yeah. And uh, you can walk to the ruins, and mm -hmm. you can see the beautiful river that flows through the Oh, they have a great the schedule. Oh gosh. Well, that was. I give Jimmy Carter credit for that. It, it had not been. Um, it had been something that was just not done before that. But, uh, and then continuing with the education. Did can you, you have anything to do with that? Well, I was not supposed to because I was working, but every time, <laughs> every time a member of the legislature would come by, I would say Sweetwater Creek Park, Sweetwater <laughs> Creek Park. And uh, you know, they, it was, they're busy, and every once in a while they'll pay attention to something that somebody has a passion for. Yeah. And uh, so, you know, that was my, 
I think that was maybe a contribution. Maybe I hope it was anyway. But to get on, continue with education, um, can you imagine a county without a library? And early on, and you've asked me some of the changes, our libraries was a bookmobile. Now, I don't even know if you <laughs> knew that. It was I West, remember the bookmobile. The bookmobile. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, it would roll oh. in here about once a week with a limited number of books. And then we had some but interesting... But that was continued even after we built libraries, bookmobile. Bookmobiles, yes. yeah. Okay. And then, but that was what we had. That was our that library. That was the only thing you had. And then somebody donated a, a little room up above a storefront. And then we moved on to a room in the courthouse. Uh -huh. And then we moved on from there to... Um, to three beautiful libraries. Yeah. And uh, I can remember, though, sitting So what with, did he have to do with that? Well, uh, not a whole lot. I was not on that library. I do remember, though, sitting at a table repairing old books because the books would be donated. Mm -hmm. But yes, we had, we have always had a good uh, library. Um, I don't know what they call them now, the one Sweet Dog River Library. Oh, Dog it was... River. Uh, Trustees, is that what yes, it is? Uh, okay. But we've always had that interest in um, the... But uh, did Jimmy Carter have... Uh, he had no... no. Uh, I okay. Don't, no, I don't think they asked him. I think it was uh, something that... Um, Just evolved uh, around. It, it, Douglas County promoted uh, that themselves, yeah. and we have to give them a lot of credit for that. But the other subject is beauty, and um, I don't know if there's anybody other than me that goes around looking at trees. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I do. I sit on my front porch and do my devotion, and I look out there as I'm surrounded by trees. Trees, yes. And the birds will actually come and get on my swing chain. Oh, wow. That's how close they get to me, and, I, and that just amazes oh, that, me. The I've birds have cardinals singing. everywhere. Yeah, well, <laughs> the trees. Now, in our county, uh, we have some trees that are very, that are not common. And it is called the chestnut oak tree. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you know that, but it's a it's a beautiful tree in the way that it grows and the branches. Mm -hmm. I'll give you an example of um, on my house when I lived on Price Avenue. I had four or five of them, and the story was that uh, the lady next door had a fabulous garden, and she had a huge variety of iris in bloom, mm -hmm. and so there was a big a uh, tour of gardeners from people coming from all over this part of the county and other counties to see her garden and her mm -hmm. iris in bloom. And Miss Hamilton used to tell me, she said, Dot, they took one look at my iris. Somebody said, look, that is a chestnut oak tree in that yard next door. And she said, they disappeared and I never saw them again. <laughs> So obviously the chestnut oak tree was, uh, more, was important. more important. <laughs> and so that's, but you know, I think, and we've lost a lot of trees in our county, but there is a beautiful stand off them down near Sweetwater okay. uh, Creek Park. So if you go down there sometime, I think now you'll- Now how would uh, I know the difference? Well, those trees- I know what trees an oak tree are, looks like. Yeah, right? well, there are what, 20, 40 varieties of oak trees. Okay. But it's the way this one is constructed. You go with one huge trunk and then the huge big branches go out from that. Okay. And the acorns on it uh, only develop after 50 years. And they're as big as pecans. Now those acorns were no friends of ours because they I were, know it. the squirrels love some, them though. I've got some falling right now. Right now. And uh, yes. when they land on a metal top or something, that one of the sheds out back, it sounds like a gun. I know a it. Gunshot. I know it. And boy, oh. those are these are hard to um, yeah. these are hard to get. But also, in addition to the trees, I not have noticed the lay of the land. And in Douglas County, we have those gentle rolling hills. Well, you know, I represent the uh, District 4, which yeah. is the western side of the county, and there are some areas in my county <clears throat> that you can ride around and see just beautiful rolling pastures. Correct. And it's just right. absolutely gorgeous. Go yes. Well, you know, um, this is not scientific, but it's my observation that, you know, our land in our county is by so many square miles. Mm -hmm. Well, when you have a hill, you have a hill going up, and then you have a hill. Well, that gives you more 
blame the crowd. <laughs> okay. I don't know if that sign. People build their houses on top. Well, of they that, build yeah. one going up the slope, <laughs> then on top of it, and then coming back down again. Yeah. And uh, you know that's uh, the the theory. We're that, relatively a uh, small county. Yeah. Well, uh, see, that's terrain. how the people in San Francisco had so much could build so they much. They built on the hill. Going <laughs> up the hill, on top of the hill, and then coming uh, back okay. down again. So that gives you. Of course, I told you that's not. Uh, that's not. Uh, not scientific. scientific. <laughs> right. But early on you asked me what changes we've seen. Well, I moved here in 1941 and there were about 8,000 people in the county. And now um, um, it's it was it's rural. It was quiet. It's, huh? it's 140,000 now. 140, <laughs> I know it. But um, in, 19, in the 40s it wouldn't be unusual to go up here and uh, uh, look on maybe on a Saturday or Sunday afternoon and you would see a bunch of kids roller skating and what we have now is Veterans Highway. <laughs> it was known as Bankhead Highway. That now. <laughs> no, not because you know you wouldn't you wouldn't even hardly cross the street now. But we roller skate up there on around the courthouse and out the street and down the street. Was that the only paved road? It was the reason that we had to do it. It was one of the few paved roads. Yes. Uh, Church Street was a, a um, dirt little road. They'd spray it with uh, full of potholes and they would spray it with <laughs> that all That hasn't the, changed, has it? No, uh, <laughs> not much. But um, then the um, Camelton Street was paved when I got here, only a little bit beyond the high school, and that was only <laughs> because we had a member of the legislature and a, a member of the Senate that lived, that lived on <laughs> Camelton Street, so it was paved. The Going out Highway 5, um, <laughs> and we used to ride horses out there. We yeah. could ride horses, just spread out, well, ride horses uh, all the way. To Mac the, Abercrombie, he, he had his... Uh, uh, barn. barn and everything right here inside right Douglasville there. when I moved here. Yeah, so. oh, yeah, <laughs> yeah. But um, that, that, that was it. That was with the, the um, but we did have a nice highway paved going all the way into Atlanta, which was, you know, needed and necessary uh, for now, our Now, when I moved here, uh, I-20 ended. In, uh, at Highway 5. <laughs> That's as far as I-20 went. Um, when you moved here? When I moved here, yeah. <laughs> there was no such thing. <laughs> you can see there's a lot of difference between yeah. you and but, um, Well, one of the things, though, that sadly in the county is that there were not a lot of jobs for young people. Right. And, uh, but Mostly farming, I guess. A lot of it was farming, and I will talk about that later okay. on, too. Um, but we were sort of known as a bedroom community because uh, people did go into Atlanta. We still to, are. We, we're still, Are we known as a bedroom? Yes, we yeah. still. It's hard well, it's, to communicate. Well, we have industry here now, but thankfully, you know, the people could go. Um, they, they work for Sears. They work for Coca-Cola. They work for, there was one insurance company called Life of Georgia that mm -hmm. people had jobs yes. with. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And um, then Southwire started in uh, Carrollton. Mm -hmm. So that was uh, a good source of, of um, and income. And now we have a branch of them in? Douglas County. Oh, I, I didn't in realize that. In my, in my district. Yeah, okay, well, great. Of, uh, 78. Yeah. Uh -huh. Well, Veteran the transportation Memorial. that we had going into Atlanta, though, uh, was the people carpooled. Now, that's a big difference. We would, there would be four or five people in one car going to downtown Atlanta. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, that saved a lot of the traffic. I wish we still did that. But we, in, in, in addition to that, we had um, the buses the southeastern motor lines from mm -hmm. Carrollton. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, you want to know where the bus station was? <laughs> I asked me where was the bus where station. Where was the bus station, Dot? <laughs> well, I worked at the drugstore, O'Neill's Drugstore, oh, yeah. which is Irish pub now. Oh, uh, yeah. And the bus station was the uh, cigar counter at O'Neill's Drugstore. <laughs> and people would come in, buy their tickets, and then they would go and, and get on the buses, and the buses would stop. And it was good. It, it worked very well. well. We have the Greta buses that leave from Douglas County in, in, in the morning in and the morning. come back in the evening. I think there's around 11 routes, mm -hmm. but they go to Atlanta. One of them, uh, some of them connect with the Holmes uh, Martyr Station. Yeah. 
but uh, and oh, I love seeing those buses come into Douglasville. Yeah, and they're comfortable and, and provide a great way of transportation uh -huh. and keeps, uh, for uh, people. Some yeah. Of them yeah, uh, <coughs> but cars um, off the roads. So. Well, I was uh, I was going to school. Live was living on Bowden Street, and I was going to school at the uh, downtown at the Atlanta Division of the University of Georgia, and this was in about 1945, 46. And at night, well, I was going to school at night, and I would get off the bus, and sometimes the the bus driver would detour down around the, you know. And take you closer to your house. take me closer <laughs> to my house. And he would stop at the top of Bowden Street and watch till I ran down the street. Yeah. <clears throat> Which, you know, that was uh, sort of <laughs> what we enjoyed in Douglas County. Yeah. That um, helping each other and sort of staying sort of close to, uh, to everybody. But um, <clears throat> one of the biggest changes, I think, was in the farming. And you mentioned that it was a... a we had a cotton uh, place right there on Camelton <coughs> Street. I mean, the uh, Cotton Warehouse. Yes. Uh, yeah. The old Haddle Building, it's I think, the, was a cotton. Well, the ha there was a big one over across the railroad track that was torn down. And then Mr. Huffine moved his warehouse to uh, where the conference center is now. Yeah. And, uh, then, it, yeah, and then it was insurance that... Uh, but you would see those... Um, you can see there's pictures around. And I looked when I came in here today to see... But I know in um, the conference center is a big picture of showing wagons full of mm -hmm. cotton, mm -hmm. being transported their mm -hmm. cotton to the warehouses. And, but then uh, that was a cash crop. But year after year, the um, land began to wear out. Mm -hmm. And I know you, probably you know if you studied it. Mm -hmm. And so after World War II, under the GI Bill, the agricultural teachers that taught these people coming back mm -hmm. and t convinced the farmers to fence in their cotton fields, develop pastures, Pasture and raise cattle. Cattle, cattle. yeah. So okay. that has been, you know, ongoing, and mm -hmm. that was commerce a really is ever changing. You know, it's, yeah. it's ever well, changing. Yeah, well, it now. was the farmers would have been very poor trying to raise uh, and trying to. Uh, mm -hmm. Harvest that uh, cotton. Well, they with the cattle, and then soon after that, they followed um, followed with the chickens. So um, that was a big change, but it it really worked, I think, mm -hmm. for the county. And then, of course, we had uh, um, they had um, row crops and raised vegetables mm -hmm. in addition to that, and. And that was a good cash now, crop for now them. Now, solar farms are coming out. <laughs> I've been to a solar farm in, in Arizona. Well, we, yeah, they, know, they call we're them. Getting, uh, we're going to be getting them around here. You'll see them. I've seen them uh, on my way to Florida sometimes. Yeah. In these beautiful pastures. They have the, all these solar panels, panels. out there. Well, now, but, uh, thank you for bringing that up. That's one of the things oh, yes, that I credit President Carter for. You've got to tell that story. He um, <clears throat> put those solar panels on the White House, uh -huh. and they did use them for heating water and for some heat. In, in you know, it was an experiment. Thirty-two solar panels wouldn't you know wouldn't do uh -huh. a lot, but they were taken off the White House during the Reagan administration and stored in. Um, some man in a small community college in Maine, Maine uh -huh. heard about them. And he thought, well, you know what? I'm going down and see if I can make a deal with them. Well, I'm sure they probably just gave them to him. And he carried them back to uh, Maine mm -hmm. and put them on their building to heat their cafeteria. And there's another college in Maine that has a tremendous um, endowment. endowment. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and they took, decided, well, they would do the same study. It. And so they, I think they ended up with about 4,000 solar panels. But then uh, if you travel over the state, you will see them. Not far from here, there's a huge one in Aragon. Is that the little town close to Cartersville? Is that is it close? Yeah. Anyway, when you travel up there going to Rome, all of a sudden you'll see this huge, uh, solar panel field, mm -hmm. and I think you know. Of course, Jimmy Carter was a pioneer with that, and uh, was one of the reasons that we. So the, even the endowment it. school, <clears throat> they started studying 
the the use of uh, the solar panels? Correct, yes. And they had enough money to make it public and really to get, you know, make it sort of the forefront of some of the, the uh, what we're seeing now. Mm -hmm. uh, other than that, otherwise it, those solar panels might have just rusted or decayed or whatever. Yeah, there's a purpose for everything. Oh, I know, <laughs> I know. One of those solar panels ended up in China, so I'm not sure uh -oh. that that's... <laughs> Uh, they stole our sure. technology, is that what you're saying? Uh, well, I don't know. I hope not. But anyway, uh, then uh, also we've talked about the trees, but timber, and I'm sure you're part yeah. of the county. Mm -hmm. And at one time there was enough timber that they could cut it and had sawmills. Mm -hmm. And but Frank Green. Correct. I remember him. Yeah, yeah he was. Oh, uh, yeah. He, he, he would cut your tree down. Uh -huh. He could cut a tree down. He and just the two of us cut a huge tree down in my yard one day that I didn't know. There'll never be another Frank Green. I know. There'll <laughs> never be another Frank, Frank Green. But um, after World War II, and I keep going back to that that's because okay. that's part of our history, and I was living right through it all. Yeah. Uh, then the young people came back and they were wanting to build their homes and uh, construction became mm -hmm. very important in Douglas County and farmers mm -hmm. knew how to use a hammer they knew how to so they just picked up their hammers and saws and went into another into another uh, field of industry which which you know seems to be what Douglas County reinvents itself which I think yeah. is is always good um, then uh, downtown Douglas for the merchants downtown um, uh, I'm not sure that they have this uh, like they did at one time. I know we have a Chamber of Commerce, but um, which is ter terrific and tremendous here. But the merchants in town were and small. And you're very active in that too. Oh yeah, I well I enjoy it. it. I really do. It's just <laughs> you're great. You're a people person. We have. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I like the Chamber of Commerce. But years ago, uh, Front Street was the main commercial part, mm -hmm. and right. and uh, the merchants worked together. If one merchant didn't have something on his shelves, he would suggest they go somewhere else. Mm -hmm. And grocery stores would deliver gro right to your house. You'd pick up the phone and order it, and they'd deliver. You know that's coming back? <laughs> yeah, yeah. That, that it is, can you believe it? It is, that, where you can call and you can even order things that Walmart, Walmart and places like that, and they just bring it out to your car. Bring it right to you, to your car. Well, I think they deliver it to your house. If, I don't know how well that works. But, well, I uh, think Uber or, or Lyft, and, uh, one of them. Yeah. Uh, they've started something where they uh, Uber food, or I don't know what it's called, but it's yeah. uh, where they do bring it to your house. Well, see, <laughs> <laughs> what goes do. around comes around sometimes. I think so too. <laughs> But we had, the grocery stores were mostly about years ago owned by a, a, maybe a husband and his wife and and they had live chickens in the back. I miss that, you know. <laughs> we go to Hawaii, that. you'll see Oh, you see the live chickens in the yeah. back, yeah. And uh, yeah, They're you can. They're everywhere. In uh, China too, the chickens. <laughs> but you go and they might even have a hog hanging back there somewhere. <laughs> and so, you know, you kind of miss those things. But, uh, the the Food and Drug Administration well, wouldn't you know, allow that uh, Talking about that, it just brings to mind the fact when I first moved here, I had my milk delivered to yeah, the Yeah, we did too. And yes. my Charles Chips. And the Charles Chips. Oh, did the, you? In the, in the, the can. can. And then uh, the um, Intrican used to pick up your laundry and bring it back to you. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so well, now I go if back you had to, anything I go back and to uh, Paul. That's who I'm talking about. No, uh, yeah, it, it was uh, Intrigan. Well, it was an Intrigan laundry, but it was Paul uh, Cochran. Cochran, okay, that's who I was oh, talking about. Oh, Paul would come into your house, and there was a certain uh, chair that you put your laundry on, uh, your dry cleaning on, and uh -huh. he would pick it up, and then he would deliver he would bring it. Bring it back. And one, <laughs> day, one time, somebody put a t dish towel or something on the chair by mistake, and next week, it's pretty <laughs> well clean press dish towel came back because my mom wasn't too happy about that she had to pay for it but yeah that was that was nice to have that done but yeah. very close community in C douglas close County. community yeah and yeah. douglas was there oh my children suffered from that because you didn't get away with anything oh i know <laughs> used to i can remember uh if 
you saw somebody else's child misbehaving, you corrected them. <laughs> right. Now you'd probably be sued for doing it. But <laughs> yeah, unfortunately, you don't get to do that because that's an advantage for the children, maybe a disadvantage for, <laughs> for us. But anyway, uh, yet my uh, son and his friend, when they were about 10, 10 I guess, they rode the bicycles all over town. Oh, they yeah. could ride their bicycles all over town. I remember doing that as a child in another city. Yeah. You know? We you felt perfectly safe. Yeah. yeah, I love to see that. You don't ever see that anymore. Mm -hmm. uh, you really don't. I miss the children doing that. Uh, but one night they decided uh, they went down to the high school and it found a door open. Uh -oh. So they parked their bicycles. <laughs> and he told me this years later. And they went in the school and that was oh, we're in the high school. There's nobody <laughs> here but us. You know, we got in the high school. And so they roamed around and the only thing they did. <laughs> Uh, was drank a Coca-Cola out of an icebox they found somewhere. Well, when they started at the same door, the night watchman was there with the pol and there was a police uh -oh. car, <laughs> and there were their bicycles. So they thought, oh my. So they found another way to get out, and they just casually walked around the building, and and they heard the the um, policeman or the white night watchman say, oh, that's Kevin. Slaughter and Cam Paget's bicycles, they're around here somewhere. <laughs> so, you know, that was the beauty of, for us, of yeah. the kids that could do that, but you don't do that anymore. But my favorite store was the uh, Five and Dime store. And uh, That's where Lamar Smith were. He, that was Sims. Yes, yeah. yes. Uh, that was uh, my predecessor uh, before I became tax commissioner. He was the tax commissioner. He was the tax commissioner, yes. right? Uh -huh. Well, he ran a very popular store. Yes. It was popular with all of the high school girls. I worked at McConnell's, the dime store, uh -huh. and I liked it better. It was more like a department store. It had a uh, um, a little bit of everything. Had, had material, overalls, toys, cosmetics, yeah. pots and pans, anything. But the most important thing was that huge candy case. Yeah. <laughs> and you could buy candy. Probably jars of candy. No, it was pieces of candy. And you take a little bag and put two or three pieces yeah. in it. You know, if they had a, bit, a penny or a dollar or a dime. Oh, no, it was that thing as a that, dollar. That went a long way back then. It did. Yeah. I still <laughs> like dime store candy, though. Mm -hmm. I really yeah. do. But well, I, I don't want to not get into your book uh, a little bit more. And um, you uh, just... Uh, the book is not just about you, but about what happened with the presidency and, and some of the issues that came up uh, while he was uh, in, uh, in office. And uh, one of them that I remember you uh, seeing something about was the 52 Americans that were mm -hmm. uh, captive in Iran mm -hmm. at the time. And could you kind of go into that just a little bit? Um, well, I that's, uh, I actually is. feel like that uh, that Iranian hostage crisis cost him the election. It, um, you know, he was he was advised not to let the Shah come into our, he was, he did not think it was good to have the Shah come into our country, but they did, and of course the Iranian students, they had started in 1977 protesting. Mm -hmm. And uh, so when they captured those 52 hostages, Jimmy Carter stayed at his desk day after day after day, and he worked with governments all over the, globally. Mm -hmm. And the most important thing that he did, though, was the day after they were captured, he froze the Iranian uh, assets. Mm -hmm. And he had the countries <clears throat> all over the world to do the same thing. Mm -hmm. So the Iranians... That's virtually what we're trying to do that right was, now. <laughs> yeah. Well, that was the thing that eventually, after the Ayatollah had his revolution, he had his constitution, he really had no need for these Americans. But he couldn't take them out and just shoot them. Mm -hmm. So you, he had to have some sort of avenue that he could let them go. Mm -hmm. But he was not going to deal with this American president or this country. So how he did it was through Algeria, was one of the major company, countries that the president, and the president had been working with countries for mm -hmm. um, over a year. And uh, so the Iranian government worked through the other governments 
And that was, and essentially when they, well, they did not release all of the assets. I think they went through the Geneva Conference or something, mm -hmm. and they were put on, um, um, they could only get a fraction of them. And when the Americans then were released, then they were, they but were released. 52 Americans 52 got to Americans come Americans came how, home how safe. Long, yeah, how long were they captured? Well, uh, you know, they were captured in no, sometime, well, they were captured on November the 4th. They, on November the 4th, Election Day, that was when they um, um, showed them on the television, and mm -hmm. that was just hor horrible mm -hmm. on Election Day. Mm -hmm. And then, of course, they were not released until January 20th mm -hmm. or 21st on the inaugural, mm -hmm. during the inauguration. Uh, 30 minutes after uh, President Reagan was, well, it was calculated. Mm -hmm. You know, the Iranian government calculated that to, just to embarrass the uh, American president. But, but you, you give uh, background uh, information that maybe the public doesn't know about what was going on in, in certain instances, uh, you know, the Panama Canal <laughs> and uh, all of that. Uh, what would you like to let the people know mostly uh, about the uh, legacy of uh, Jimmy Carter. About the legacy? Uh -huh. Well, I think, of course, the legacy will be maybe the Camp David peace accords, which have, have never been violated. And But I find most interesting in the modern history now, in our hemisphere, it's Panama Canal treaties. Okay, if you could go into that and, and Panama share was it. beginning to be very <laughs> hostile to our country, and they were uh, considered themselves an occupied country because the canal zone is made up of ten mile strip mm -hmm. that goes right through the middle of their country, and. Uh, we were sending more military down there each year. Each year they would have a contract with us and they were charging us more money. The Panama Canal did not operate as a profit to our country. And I don't think very many people recognize that. Mm -hmm. As a result of the treaties and giving Panama this freedom, then they created their own democracy. Then the other countries followed suit. And the other countries in uh, Latin America uh, have gone from having military governments to democratic governments. So I, you know, I think that is very important mm -hmm. to get Sometimes two thirds of the Senate people. to agree to yes. that treaty, which was, if it had not been for Howard Baker, who was a Republican from uh, Tennessee, I don't know that he could have gotten it done. Uh -huh. But there were five presidents before him that had laid it on their desk to say we need to do something about this. Uh -huh. And they just had never gone to the, they didn't have the tenacity, I don't think, and the determination and the stubbornness of Jimmy Carter. But I want to say we're going to be celebrating 150 years in Douglas County. All right. And I believe next year, um, 2020, uh -huh. in that uh, 150 mm -hmm. years, I was around for the 75th. <laughs> Ju uh, diamond they, you better be careful, you'll be telling your age now. <laughs> I, I know, I know that. Well, my age, you know, it's unlimited. It's, it's unlisted. But anyway, your talents uh, are unlimited, too. Uh, well, in 1900, when 75 I was in a beauty contest, I was Miss Lions Club. So I'm waiting to see if the Lions Club this year is going to ask me to be in the beauty contest <laughs> for 150 years. Yeah. People think I've been around that long. <laughs> and you've been great. Thank you. Uh, you've been fantastic. And, and I just look forward to seeing what you're going to do next because I, I know what you're going to do. But I would like to just kind of close with what would you like the people of uh, the our community to know personally about Jimmy Carter, not the political side of him, but the personal side. Well, I think one of the things that we have that, uh, that people can relate to in Douglas County, of course, is Habitat for Humanity. Uh -huh. and, and Jimmy will laugh and he say, that's the thing that I'm known for. I'll do that two weeks out of every year. But he is one, I think, that's responsible for uh, this being able to more responsible than anybody else because uh, the man that started it uh, went to Jimmy Carter and he and Rosen started hammering and sawing. And, and I understand on his 94, 94, he'll be 95 okay. when he will be still. Unbelievable. Well, yes, but I, and uh, I think 
what I appreciate about Ann is that oh uh, <laughs> her approach to government is the same as Jimmy Carter. And I think his, his approach and her approach is still common sense, and honesty are the basis for good government. Well, I appreciate that. I appreciate that. And she wrote that in my book when she signed <laughs> it. <too. laughs> so I've got it in writing from Dot Paget. <laughs> yeah, well, it was a, it's original, but I am sure that a lot of people feel the same way. And if anybody wants to buy your book? Well, they can get in touch with me, and the books are also on <laughs> sale at the Little Antique Mall in Villarica. That's another treasure. Okay. And they're on sale there in a little book nook. Okay. But uh, th they can um, get in touch with me. Um, TJ knows where I am. And there's lots of uh, pictures in the book. And the co controversial one was him with his arm around you, and the newspaper wouldn't put it when, when, during the campaign, and they no, wouldn't. Well, that was when he was governor, and he was coming out to, here to a listening and they wouldn't put the picture in the nope. paper because he had his arm around her. Can you believe that? The governor of the state of Georgia did not get that picture in the Well, this was back years ago, and um, they And you're it still was friends bit. with them. Abs oh, we're very, very good friends. Yes. Yeah. Yes. But um, yeah, that's uh, that was a that was a fun picture. But yeah, they are, are close friends, and. Um, we, we, I have little notes every once in a while, and, and he introduced, he actually did the foreword yes, on uh, my book for me. Uh -huh. And it's a fun foreword. Read it. Uh -huh. Read it. Yeah, Most right. people skip the foreword. Yes. But Jimmy Carter did the foreword on it. The little blurb it was done by Oz Nelson, who is the CEO and the creator of United Parcel Services, oh, okay. UPS. So, you know, um, I guess I've known some great people. You have. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's been great. And, and so. uh, we look forward to the next book. <laughs> well, I had to delete 300 pages. I know we've, um, we've kind of skipped around here today and everything, but uh, she's got so much knowledge up here and so much history in her mind. and, and uh, she's lived it, and uh, <laughs> we would have to uh, keep filming for a couple of days but if we even touch the iceberg, so uh, the tip of the iceberg, but uh, it's just been a pleasure to have you here. You're my friend, yes, and I, I yeah. see her all the time because I... People wish that they could keep up with her. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, thank you for viewing uh, District Dialogue, and until next time, so long. Bye-bye.